So today we're going to begin our focus um, on our short-term environmental change that we're, that we're going to be focusing on, I guess, for the next week. Um, and that is the ENSO and the IOD. I'll explain what those are in a moment. But it's all related to Australia's climate and the difference in climate patterns from year to year. So we all kind of know that Australia is a land of drought and flooding rain. We, we have this intrinsically within us because we, we grow up in this country and we know that some years it's really dry and some year there's these, there's these floods. And um, we know that Australia's climate is, it changes so dramatically. But why? That's what we're going to look at um, over the next week. We're going to look at the reasons that from year to year, Australia's climate varies hugely. And this doesn't happen everywhere in the world. In most, people, in most countries, in most places in the world, the climate is quite stable from year to year and you know what you're going to expect. And drought is something that is uh, extremely rare. However, in Australia, it's something that is a little bit more common for a few reasons. And we're going to talk about those reasons um, over the next week. So just for an example, um, the first graph here on the left shows um, Australia's temperatures from uh, last year, from 2019. So we can see um, the 2019 temperatures and this is taking all the temperatures, averaging them out, and was the year hotter than normal or below normal, above average or below average? And you can see there that most of Australia was very much above average temperature. And some of it um, was even pushing up into the highest on record. And actually, quite a lot of it was pushing up into that area. Now, and you look over again on the on the right hand side and you look at rainfall and you can see there that most of the country or quite a large amount of the country is either very much below average rainfall or even in some cases the lowest on record um, especially in that northern new south wales southern queensland area um, lowest on record rainfall now that was last year and let's compare that to what's happened so far this year so, so far this year, you can see that um, the temperatures are in this part of the world, just a little bit above average. Um, and in some parts, not so much. In some parts, they're actually quite dramatically above average. But if you look at the rainfall, you can see that we've had, um, well, a, a, the white area is the average rainfall and anything that's getting up into the blue is is much higher than normal rainfall. So you can see here that this year so far, we've actually had quite a lot more rainfall. And what we're gonna look at in this PowerPoint is what are the reasons that the rainfall and the temperature fluctuate so much in Australia? So from 2019 to 2020, what was the difference? Why is it raining this year? And why wasn't it raining last year? So Australia's climate is constantly changing. You can see that in the picture of Bansdale below. Um, there is not much left of uh, Hainesville Road there, um, and there's not much left of the skate park or anything like that. So it's, it, we know that Australia's climate is changing because it's not like this all the time. This doesn't happen every year. It just happens pretty rarely. You may know that we have hot years and cold years and fires and no fires and rain and no rain. But scientists and meteorologists um, have developed complex understandings of Australia's climate and how it changes. Scientists and meteorologists know and can predict these patterns. So they understand that drought and floods in our region of Australia and throughout Australia more broadly are caused by two main systems that we're going to look at uh, in the next week. The first is the El Nino Southern Oscillation. The El Nino Southern Oscillation or ENSO. Now, El Nino in Latin means the boy. Okay, and we'll talk about that in a bit later. But El Nino Southern Oscillation. The reason it's in Spanish is because this weather pattern doesn't just influence Australia, it actually influences 
um, the whole coastline of North and South America as well. So it's, it's a huge weather system and it, it's a um, very uh, complex and uh, profound weather system that we, we need to understand if we're to understand Australia's climate. And the second is the Indian Ocean Dipole. The Indian Ocean Dipole. So we've got ENSO and the IOD. Okay. We're going to be looking at these two in a lot of detail this week to try and really understand, or next week I should say, to really try and understand um, what causes the changes in Australia's climate. Okay. And as I just said, these systems also affect other regions on Earth from California all the way to Eastern Africa. They're not just Australian um, climate drivers, they drive climate right across the globe. Okay? And they're very important systems that we are going to discuss. All right, so the first one we're gonna look at is the Indian Ocean Dipole. And this is the first one we're gonna delve into and that's because it's the one that's had the most recent effect in Australia. It's the one that is current and we can we can really talk about the recent weather events that we've been experiencing in, that we've been experiencing in relation to the Indian Ocean Dipole. So, what I'm about to explain now that there is a YouTube video link in the lesson plan. So, if what I'm saying doesn't make sense, please listen to someone else explain it with um, moving pictures, and it might make more sense. But listen to both and see see if you can get an understanding of this. The main thing to think about um, with these climate drivers is they're looking at what causes rain. They're looking at the evaporation from warm oceans, so the evaporation of water from warm oceans into the sky, and then wherever that's occurring, there is more rainfall. There is more rainfall where there's more evaporation. So if we follow the hot water, if we follow the warm water in the oceans, we'll find the rainfall. Okay. So what we find uh, is that warm water in our oceans is not um, <clears throat> is not always in the same place. It moves around, and <clears throat> as such, so does the weather. So. The Indian Ocean dipole, dipole has two phases. It has a positive phase and a negative phase. Now, this positive phase is when there's a large area of warm water on the eastern coast of Africa, as you can see in this image. So warmer than normal water in the eastern coast of Africa and um, on the western coast of India and up up in that general region and the waters off the coast of Western Australia and Indonesia are cooler than normal. Okay, so we're set up with this system okay and what that leads to is um, as you can see that the direction of, of wind and airflow that is um, that is shown in that diagram but also what that means is the rain follows the warm water. So you'll find the warm water moving towards Africa, the rainfall moving towards Africa, and what that means is that in Australia we have a much reduced chance of rainfall across that northwestern and then into southern Australia. Okay. Now the weather in Australia um, moves from, uh, from the west to the east, so from western Australia over towards us, and so things that occur in that general area of Western Australia have a huge impact on whether um, we have rain or whether we don't. So this is a positive phase. A positive phase means that there's reduced chance of rain in Australia and more chance of rain over in Africa and maybe into the Middle East. Okay? Now this is I guess counter counteracted with a negative phase. So in a negative Indian Ocean Dipole, we see that 